to me, that's the holy grail of what I'm chasing in my content. I want it to be relatable and connect with you and make you not only want to consume it week after week, you know, bake it into your schedule, but I, I want you to love it so much that you share it with other people because it's helpful, it's entertaining, and you're learning something and inspired from it. The Perspective Podcast is fuel for your mind and creative grind. Each week, my guests and I provide the skills for thinking bigger, overcoming adversity, and making an impact with your work. What's going on? You're listening to episode 192 of the Perspective Podcast. I'm your host, Scotty Russell of Perspective Collective, and my mission is to help you grow a fulfilling, profitable, and sustainable creative side hustle. At the end of each episode, I plug a listener of the week, so stick around to figure out how you can get a permanent shout out on a future episode. Hold on to your buttery biscuits as I have three big pieces of news to run through quickly. Number one, I'm unleashing the Engage Community Building Blueprint video course January 13th through the 22nd, and this is going to be available if you're hearing it later over at engagecommunitycourse.com. This is seven modules and 40 plus lessons loaded, absolutely loaded like a baked potato with actionable tips, worksheets, reference examples, and more. Consider this your step-by-step roadmap for finding your creative pulse, getting the right people to care about your work, building your community hub, boosting engagement, promoting yourself, selling, and so much more. I'll also have some killer bonuses like one being a free month of group coaching worth $997. For those who jump on this early, got a ton of other things I'm baking into this as well. And number two, if you've downloaded the free Engage Community Guide over at engagecommunityguide.com, you're going to get exclusive dibs to a major early bird homie hookup January 11th through 12th before the full video course goes live at the full price January 13th. It'll never be this low ever, forever, ever, forever, ever, ever again, especially as I reopen the launch in later 2021. So do not miss it if this is even remotely interesting to you. Again, go jump on the Engage Community Guide at engagecommunityguide.com if you want to make sure you get that exclusive access. And number three, the last thing, I'm hosting a three-part Engage Community Challenge in my free private Facebook community. Oh my God, so many engage in community. When I wrote this, I didn't realize what it would sound like, but you get the point. With this, I'm going to dish out my top tips for building community around you and your work the right way to kick off 2021 with a bang. Part one kicks off January 4th, so register ASAP over at engagedcommunitychallenge.com. That's it. Let's get into the overview of today's show. Quick question. Does the following struggle sound familiar at all as you try to grow some type of engaged following audience or community around you and your work? All right, here's the struggle. Are you constantly sharing anything and everything, but people don't seem to notice or even care? And this is aside from the occasional like from your BFF, but that's about it. Does this sound like you at all? Is this a struggle you deal with? Nobody seems to care. Nobody seems to notice yet you're consistently putting stuff out there? Well, this seems to be a theme I hear over and over and over again, and it's hella easy to get frustrated and defeated in your attempts to get people to care about what you're doing. I get it. Trust me. I've been there, and it sucks major butt when you strut into a ghost town after posting. You know, it's just silence, crickets, nothing. Again, aside from that occasional life from your BFF or your mom. However, there's one little secret I learned that radically shifted the way I approach this game of creating and sharing whatever it is I'm creating on social media. That's what today's episode in part two in this community building series is all about. Embracing this secret and leveraging the three buckets of value to start getting people to care about what you're doing. Before we get started, today's episode is brought to you by our family at Garm Company. Garm, which is Graphic Artist Resource Merchant Co., is a newly open boutique-style shop for designer tools, resources, and goods crafted together with some of the most talented designers in the business. Their textures, brushes, fonts, flash packs, and courses help you achieve that highly desired professional polish while, more importantly, saving you tons of time and not breaking your bank. So visit garmcompany.com scotty and use code pizza20 to take 20% off your purchase. 
Thank you, Garm. Love you guys. Also, shout out to you Patreon supporters who financially back the show like my family at Iron Bean Coffee Company. With as little as your weekly cup of coffee, your support directly helps the show continue to grow, allowing me to invest in the podcast team, equipment, as well as hosting. To learn more about how you can back us, as well as the pledge and rewards, visit patreon.com slash perspective podcast. We couldn't do what we do without you, so thank you very much. And one last thing, if you found value in this episode, it would mean the world to me if you took a screenshot or a video of you working to this in the background, and then simply tag me on Instagram stories so we can connect and I can just reshare that love back. As always, keep an open mind and act on anything that inspires you today. Let's go. to cover the secret to getting people to care about you. Stick with me as I'm challenging you today to turn off your creativity switch and then flip on your marketing switch. So here's a secret to getting people to care about you and your work. Are you ready? You listening? You get your notes ready? This one's pretty simple, so obvious, so common sense, but yet people drop the ball on this all the time because they're selfish. So a great way to get people to care about what you're doing is to simply first show that you care about them. Let me reiterate this in a form of a question. Why should anyone give two shits about you when you don't show that you give two shits about them? Give someone a reason to care. Back to the the whole focus and the theme of giving from last week's episode. So give someone a reason to care by giving them something. This is huge if you want to create an engaged community of super fans who like, know, and trust you and want to buy your shit and share everything you put out there with someone else in their following. And once you embrace and accept this, you can get back to the basics and create with intention and post with a purpose, as my student Marvin likes to say. So yes, it's important to know who your work is for and how to attract them. I'll go deeper on this next week once we close out part three of this series. But for now, let's focus on the important part of the formula of why should anyone care and what's in it for them. In a noisy, oversaturated world of social media, it's more important than ever to be intentional about what you do and know what's in it for the person engaging on the other side. And this is going to help you strike a nerve with one person over time to build up your army of fans and build that collective community. All right. Let's talk about the three buckets of value now that you know the secret's out of the bag, all right? The secret's out, put it to use, spread the word, share it with someone else who's also struggling to get people to care. You know, pass this shit on, pass it on. Okay, three buckets of value. If you're a listener of this show, I've talked about this before, but never like this in depth and never as in depth as I'm going to be going into uh, in the Engaged Community Building Blueprint video course. I'm going super in depth about this topic. So... How the hell do you show people you care in order to get them to care about you? I say, give someone a reason to care, give them value, but what the hell does that mean? Let me break this down into a simple, actionable strategy for you. And I heard a rendition of this concept years ago. I honestly cannot remember where I heard it from. Otherwise, you know me, I would give them credit, but I've since put my own spin to it. All right, my own little unique thumbprint to this concept. And I call this operating within the three buckets of value. Again, I talk about this um, in the Gage Community Guide, so go and get that for free over at engagecommunityguide.com if you don't have it yet. Otherwise, I got it linked up in the show notes, but you can give someone a reason to care by creating work that is either one, inspirational, two, educational, or three, entertaining. I'm going to go down and break down each one. So, inspiration, bucket number one. Simple. Share a message or a story that inspires someone to take some form of action or makes them feel some type of way. You know, motivated, excited, determined, driven, hungry. For example, you could tell some type of vulnerable, transformational story of how you turned a negative situation into a positive outcome. Include how you did it to give your audience hope, as well as action steps that they can do something similar. And for me, this is easily, by far, ever since I got started over six years ago, this is the biggest bucket I'm a player in before I even knew this was a bucket to be a player in. I was playing the game before I knew it was a game. I, I realize motivational based things are what fuels me. You know, the Tony Robbins of the world, the Zig Ziglar's, the Gary V's, these dudes pump me up. They get me fired up and they speak to me and speak to my old self who was just like lost and 
a negative dude who just didn't want to listen or felt like there was any hope for me. So these guys reached me and helped me get back on my feet. So naturally, I'm inclined to create the type of stuff that helps me push to the next level. So I share what my old past self needed, which is attracting similar people to my past self who also feed off that inspiration bucket. They want to be motivated and feel some type of way to start taking massive uncomfortable action within their lives and their creative pursuits. So the inspirational bucket. Number two, educational bucket. Again, super simple, common sense. Teach someone something new or helpful. For example, me writing an episode on tips on how to get people to care more and engage with your work. Like I would say this episode is very educational and I'm also going to sprinkle in maybe in a, an inspirational story or two. I, I don't know, but you get my point, right? I'm trying to teach you something that maybe you didn't know that you now can apply to progress and see growth within your own pursuits. And this is a bucket I've really put more focus on in over the last, I would say two years for sure. Back when I started like talking about breaking down how I do what I do within my size hustle, time management, project management, overcoming the inner struggles or sharing my process, teaching what I know. You know, I really started doing this within the last two or three years, but since I started coaching, actually more in 2020, I've like hyper-focused on how to do this, you know, teach what I know. And to me, this really seems to resonate with people and continues to grow a community around what I'm doing. And within this community, it's like-minded people who are now taking what I teach them and then passing it on to someone else and building their own communities. And this, this seems to be the sweet spot of what I'm passionate about, what I'm good at and experienced in, and there's a need for it, All right? To me, that's the sweet spot. And the third bucket is entertaining, something that brings entertainment to someone in the form of providing an escape that can be oddly satisfying. It could be hilarious as fuck. I have AF in my notes. It can create suspense. It can scare someone. It can pique someone's curiosity. For example, think of all those viral videos on TikTok of people doing pranks or dancing or just like fails. Because if you're like me, who doesn't like laughing at people who fall? Like in the past, me and Emily, my wife, would literally Google or literally YouTube people falling. And we would just laugh, have a good old grand old time just making fun of people. <laughs> From the sense of just watching videos. I'm not out here in life just making fun of people. That's that's not my that's not my vibe. So think to yourself, why do you watch any type of specific movies, TV shows, or YouTube channels? Is it to be entertained? I mean, maybe you're being educated on these things, or maybe you're being inspired. And I would say most of the time you're looking to be entertained when you're consuming things. And why I ask this? Because I want you to understand why you consume these things and begin to connect the dots to what you can bring to the table that could provide that same effect to someone else within these buckets that you're operating in. And here's a bonus. Here's a bonus takeaway. This is where true mastery comes into play, I feel, when it comes to creating super fans over time. And I'm referring to those who just can't get enough of your content. They share it with their following. They have alarms set to buy your latest release on whatever it is you're selling. All right, those are super fans. Those are hardcore connected community members. And the holy grail of content, in my opinion, is when you can combine all three buckets, inspirational, educational, and entertaining, into the work you're creating. So let me just give you an example of what I'm attempting to do. I'm not saying I'm I'm executing this to perfection or anything, but over the years, I start learning what buckets I'm a player in. I understand what the holy grail can be, and this is what I'm attempting to do with each podcast episode, and it's just the podcast in general. So Potentially, I'm trying to inspire you to take some form of action, okay? That inspiration bucket, while also giving you tactful strategies and tips so you can start seeing the results that I talk about, as well as baking in some type of emotional roller coaster approach that can be both uplifting, serious at times, and yes, even comical. All right, that's that entertainment factor. So, inspiration, education, and entertainment. To me, that's the holy grail of what I'm chasing in my content. I want it to be relatable and connect with you and make you not only want to consume it week after week, you know, bake it into your schedule, but I I want you to love it so much that you share it with other people because it's helpful, it's entertaining, and um, you're, you're learning something and inspired from it. At the same time, I don't want you to feel overwhelmed with the pressure of trying to hit a grand slam holy grail from the jump by creating within these buckets. I'm just, I'm just planting some seeds here, Johnny Appleseed over here, so please Make shit easy on yourself and just just start slow. Slow and steady. Be that tortoise. Win a race. 
It's a marathon. All right, tortoise went in a marathon. So pick one bucket. That's my action item to you. Uh, I got another one here in a second, but pick one bucket that naturally aligns with who you are at your core and just start going deep. So here's an ongoing little challenge for you moving forward. Start studying and understanding what buckets people are thriving in and why it works for their specific audience. Okay, you know my buckets. I've broken down what I'm a player in and how I apply them. Now pick a bucket for yourself and start applying this to your own method of madness within your creative work. And one more final thing I want to drill home with you before you share anything now, before you share anything, be intentional about what bucket it falls into and be able to answer the following question. Why should someone care about this? Why should someone uh, give two shits about this post or this content that I'm producing and what value does it provide? When you focus on these things about being intentional and keeping in mind why anyone should care, good shit is going to happen over time. Trust me with this. Trust me, trust me, trust me. People will begin to care. PC family, there you have it. Part two of this three-part community building series is in the books. You can find the full episode link in the form of a blog post if you'd like to read these things, containing all links and references in the show notes within your current podcast listening app really hope you're finding some actionable golden nuggets baked within this uh, episode one and episode two in this series. Stay tuned. We're going to wrap this up next week with part three. You're not going to want to miss this one too. Hyping it up because I'm giving you three questions to find the right person who's the perfect fit for what you're providing with your work, your offering, whatever it is you're putting into this world. Let me help you find the right person who's a perfect fit for it. If you want more on this topic, again, Make sure you download the free Engage Community Guide over at engagecommunityguide.com, which automatically puts you on the wait list to access the early bird discounted rate, that homie hookup for the upcoming Engage Community Building Blueprint video course I'm releasing early December. You're not going to want to miss that. Again, if you found value in this one, do me a favor. Just share it with your friends, your family, your following, if you feel like they could find it useful too. And if this show has helped you along your creative grind at any time, could you do me a solid Not only just sharing the show, that's super helpful, but just leaving a rating and review over on Apple Podcasts or iTunes. Not only does it help the show climb the charts in the arts design category, but it staples you in as a future listener of the week. And today's listener of the week is titled Top 5 Side Hustle Podcasts, and it comes from Elgin from More Human Podcast. And they state, I've been listening to this podcast for a few years, and I've grown so much from Scotty's wisdom. That's dope. Beyond the solid weekly content, I love how the podcast grows with him without ever feeling redundant. He leads by example and shares what he's learned throughout his journey in an open and sincere manner. You rock, Scotty. Thank you, Elgin. Yes, you articulated exactly what I'm trying to do here. There may be some overlap in what I talk about, but I hopefully I learn more and I continue to expand upon it and think about how I can like uh, break it down into more actionable bite-sized steps for you to apply in your creative grind like ASAP. That's the goal here. Teach what I know and make it easy for you uh, to, to do it as well. So as I sign off, I want to give a huge shout out to my podcast editor, Anya Brennan, executive assistant, Paige Garland, video specialist, Colton Bacher, social media coordinator, Hannah Schick, and Nick Jenkins of Bluka for all the dope theme music you hear on this show. And as you finish off your week strong, I want to encourage you to keep showing up, keep putting in the work, and keep creating. You got this.